Okay, so now we will have a look at how we can actually use this for something useful instead of just having buttons to press where you are um, writing some text over the player. So we need to add some new sprites or new, um, yeah, some new sprites to the game. And inside my sprite folder, I already have the two sprites that I'm going to use. I'm going to use the bonfire and the heart. And remember, when you're adding these sprites, you'll need to set the texture type to 2D and UI sprite here. If you don't have that, then you are not able to add them to your game. So first of all, I'm going to add the bonfire. I'm going to add it here. You can see it's way, way too big for this game right now. So I'm just going to scale it down. And then I'm going to place it somewhere. Still way too big. It's a huge bonfire. Yeah, let's, let's put it like, like this. So I'm just going to leave it at that position. Okay, so the player needs to be able to collide with it. So I'm simply going to select it. And I'm going to write Collider. And I'm going to take a Box Collider 2D. So this is the player's Box Collider. Um, and that's basically what I need to do because the player already has a rigid body on him and it has a Box Collider 2D on him. But we might want to make him a... Actually, we want to make him, not him, but we want to make the bonfire here a trigger so that the player can um, yeah, can, can stand on him. So when we've done that, we can go to our script or actually we, we might as well add the heart. So drag the heart into the scene as well and place it somewhere you want it and make it a little smaller or your other. Maybe you don't have a heart, maybe you have something else. And you select the heart, you go to add component, you find the box collider 2D, and you make it a trigger as well. And then you play the game, and you make sure that you can walk over these two. So now you can see the player is hidden behind two sprites, and we are not interested in that. We need to make sure that the player is on top of them. So select the bonfire and the heart, go to the order and layer, and put it at minus one, for example. So now they are at minus one, which means that they will be rendered before the player. So the player will be rendered on top of these two. So now the player is on top of the heart and on top of the bonfires, as well as you can see. When you have done that, we need to go into the player script to add some functionality. So let's find the script and find the player script and open it up. And then we need to add a new function. We need to add and on trigger stay from so go all the way to the bottom and again don't mind my code here it's nothing you will have it's just what I'm using to make the player animate correctly so basically here you can write void on trigger stay 2d remember it's 2d because we're working with 2d sprites and then we're going to write collider 2d other Okay, so now we have on trigger state 2D, and this one is going to be called as long as the player is standing on uh, on another um, an, uh, on a trigger. So we're going to make two if statements: if other name equals bonfire, and down here we're going to say else if other name equals health or heart it's called heart there we go um, then we need to give him some damage and show some different text so let's go back into unity and make sure that it has the right names it, this one is named bonfire and the other one is named heart so let's check if they work so debug.log bonfire debug.log heart So let's try to save these and see if this even works. Jump back into Unity and let's see. So now you can see the player standing on the bonfire and this one is counting up. So this one is fired as long as I'm standing on top of the bonfire. And if I go to the heart, then it's writing heart in the console as long as I'm standing on top of the heart. Okay, so actually the, the function already works. So we can jump back into the script, delete the two debugs, we don't need them. And now we need to make sure that we can take some damage. So first of all, in the top here, 
we will have to make a private bool called um, on cooldown. So what I'm making right now is simply something for demonstration purposes because I don't want the player to go on top of the bonfire and then just get fired with damage. I, I can try that actually without adding the cooldown first. We'll add the cooldown later. For now, just write private bool on cooldown up here in your fields. And we're going to use it later so you can see the difference. So on trigger stay, we are going to say we're going to make an integer called random. And we're going to call random dot range between zero and nine. And if our uh, random is less than four, then we are going to say combat text manager dot instance dot create text at transform dot position at player's position, and we are going to reduce our health with um, 5 and it's going to be color dot red and it's going to be false it's not a critical hit um, actually we can make it more random we can say integer random damage equals random dot range 0 to 10 no, not 0 say 3 to 10 and then we're going to use the random damage here okay so what I just did was that first of all we make a random roll between 0 and 9 and basically we can say between uh, 0 and 1 and if the random random here is zero for example so now we have 50 percent chance of making a non-critical strike and a 50 percent chance of making a critical strike so we're going to make it else here so if we roll zero then we know that we made a non-critical strike so we need to roll how much damage we need to give it's the damage that we need to give is um, calculated from three to ten so we find a random number between two 3 and 10 and store it here when we've done that we will go over here and we will just instantiate it at the player's position right we take minus something amount of damage we just roll for example minus 3 damage and it's going to be written in the red color and it's a non-critical strike else we can simply just take this copy it paste it down here and say that we will have to make something between 11 and 20 when we crit and it's going to be true because it's a critical strike here. And basically we can copy this and paste it down here in health, in, in our heart. And then it should be plus instead of minus when we get gain some health. And the color should be green. That green, there we go. Else it's basically the same, there's 50% 50, 50 chance of doing whatever. So now we don't have a cooldown on it. So let's try to see what happens when we enter the bonfire, for example. As you can see, we get lots of numbers here and you are basically unable to read this, as you can see. And we're not interested in that. So we need to put on a cooldown. And we can do that because we created this on, uh, on cooldown. And we're going to make a... Um, yeah, what is it called? I enumerator, so private I enumerator. And it's going to be called cool down damage. And basically I'm gonna call it cool down. Just write it all out. And it's just just gonna say yield return new wait for seconds. And it should wait as many seconds as the cooldown will take. So it's three seconds, for example. So right now it's going to wait three seconds and then it's going to say on cooldown equals false. Um, and up here it's going to say on cooldown equals true. And basically I'm going to do like this. In here I'm going to say if on cooldown. So if it isn't on cooldown, I'm going to make all these random things. 
I'm going to make the damage and I'm going to do the same thing up here if on cooldown with an exclamation mark in front of it. Okay, so right now we are only able to take damage if we are not on cooldown because we sit this here. And this means inside here we need to start that coroutine. Start coroutine on cooldown. I uh, cooldown damage. There we go. And we need to do the same thing down here. And up there, of course, down in our heart here. There we go, okay. So first of all, we're checking, are we on cooldown? If we're not on cooldown, we're going to start the cooldown damage and then we're going to set the cooldown to true. Then we're waiting for three seconds and we're setting it to false again so that we can run all this code up here one more time. So this is a very simple way of, yeah, simply uh, making some cooldown on, on some damage you're standing on. Let's try this again. Let's go into the bonfire, let's go into nine. Three seconds is a little long, maybe nine, five, six. See if we can get a critical. Three, four. Doesn't look like we can get a critical. Let's check it out again. Zero and one. If it's zero, if it's zero, apparently it rolls zero every time. Let's try one more time, Let's see if it can, or maybe the upper bound is not really included. If I do like this, will I ever get a critical? Okay. Doesn't look like we can get a critical, so we will change this around. We will say that it goes between 0 and 2. And we'll do the exact same thing down here. Even though it's written random float number between minimum inclusive and maximum inclusive. So it should return something between 2 and 1. But apparently it doesn't. Um, let's try again. Three. 17, that was a critical, and 16, that's also a critical. So now you can see we can get these critical strikes. Um, let's try to put the cooldown a little lower. Let's say that it's two seconds maybe. It seems a little more fair. As you can see, the numbers actually look a little small now, so you can always make them bigger if that was one. So yeah, now you can see it's actually hitting the critical more and down here with the heart 15 plus 12 5 and 13 okay one more thing i would like to show you is uh, if for example um let's say that we have our um, camera is stuck to our player like this and we are moving around in our game world like this and our camera just follows our player and we go in here and you'll see now the text is following the player when I get a something it, it follows the player around right now 19 uh, 14 and it follows him if you're not interested in following letting it follow the player if you want it to stand here and then keep flowing up here even though the player has moved you can simply go to the um, combat text uh, sorry the canvas here and right now it's screen space camera if you select this one and put it on world space instead and you go in here and take the damage, you'll see that the text stays where it got instantiated instead of following the player. So this is one way of, of doing that if, if you want it to stay at the position or if you want it to follow the player, it's, it's up to you what you really want. So that was uh, yeah some extra settings you could add. So that was basically everything we needed to do with the 2D part. Um, the next thing we could do is to look at how we can take this and transfer it into a 3D game. So I'm going to add one more part where we are taking the scripts and moving them to a scene with some 3D objects and making some changes so that we can actually see it works in a 3D game as well.